What is this that I am putting on my fingers? A lot of people who are new to cake decorating are completely intimidated by fondant. So my goal with this video was to give you the five mistakes to avoid when you're working with fondant for the first time. And today I'm going to be breaking it down for you and reacting to my original video and clarifying some things and answering the most frequently asked questions that come up in the comments section. So let's get right into it. So one of the things that I've started doing is being very mindful of the intros to my video and this one still is a little long and my newer videos have a much shorter intro to them. I'm using a small pack of satin eyes brand fondant for this video. Now when you first open any brand of fondant the first thing that you want to do is knead it and make it pliable. If you're handling fondant without gloves, it will become sticky and start to stick to your fingers and hands. This is a no-no. If you're working without gloves, you'll need to have some solid white vegetable shortening. I get a lot of questions on this particular mistake and the most common question that I received is, what is this that I am putting on my fingers? So just to reiterate, this is solid white vegetable shortening. In the US, it's uh, commonly referred to by the brand name Crisco. If you live in an area where shortening is not available, the next best thing to use is coconut oil. Now, I recently worked on a cake and I could not even find my shortening, but I did have coconut oil handy, so I did use a little bit of that while I was working with my fondant, so it's completely fine to use. The one thing I will tell you is that a little bit of coconut oil goes a long way. Once it hits the heat from your hands, it like melts almost instantly and can become very, very oily. So just use a little bit when you are working with your fondant. Another question that I get is if you can use butter as an alternative to the shortening in this case. And my answer to that is no. Okay, let's get into our next mistake. There will be times when you'll need to color your fondant with gel paste coloring to achieve a certain color. Whether you're starting from white fondant or pre-colored fondant, you never want to color fondant without wearing gloves. Unless you want to look like you've committed a terrible crime, wearing gloves while coloring fondant is a must. That's something I don't do very often in a video, but I, I couldn't resist. I had to. I had to make that joke. Wearing the gloves still very, very important, especially when you're coloring fondant, but not just fondant, but you know, gum paste or modeling chocolate, anything that you need to color with your hands, um, using gloves really does come in handy. First and foremost, it keeps everything nice and clean, especially if you need to color um, a lot of fondant in a lot of different colors. So having the gloves handy is still a good tip. All right, on to our next mistake. Roll out your fondant. You'll want to do so on a clean, flat surface. I like to use parchment paper or a fondant mat. I can tell you right now, this fondant isn't coming up because I haven't dusted my surface. Don't forget to prep your surface with powdered sugar or cornstarch. You can be messy like me and just toss it and spread it across the work surface, but if you want to dust your surface without all of the extra mess, I would highly recommend the Wilton dusting pouch. You just fill it, twist, and dust away. One thing that I have started doing is exclusively using cornstarch for dusting my surface and not using powdered sugar or a powdered sugar cornstarch mix. I have a hack on how you can make your own dusting pouch really, really easy in a separate video and that is linked in the description below. So now on to the next mistake. The next mistake typically happens while you're rolling out your fondant. If your fondant looks like this, it's far, far too thick to cover a cake or apply as accents. To avoid this mistake, use the guides on your rolling pin. Guides accompany most Wilton brand rolling pins intended for fondant. The guides will help you roll the fondant to a consistent thickness, but be mindful not to roll over your fondant with your guides. Rolling your fondant in both directions will also help you get your fondant to a consistent thickness. If you're covering a cake with fondant, you'll need to ice the cake with buttercream or ganache first. This is an absolute essential and you cannot skip this step. 
When covering a cake, your fondant should not be too thick or too thin. You want to avoid rolling your fondant super thin because it's more likely to tear, to rip, to also exhibit what's referred to as elephant skin. So you really want to be mindful of how thick or how thin you're rolling your fondant. Now on to our next mistake. So you're all done working with your fondant for the day. If you simply lump it together and leave it sitting out exposed to the air, this is a big mistake. To prevent your fondant from drying out and becoming brittle, you'll need to store it properly for future use. You do this by rolling your fondant into a ball or a log shape. Cover the fondant with a thin layer of shortening and wrap it in plastic wrap. As an extra measure, especially for long-term storage, you may want to consider placing the wrapped fondant into a sandwich or freezer bag. Now you're ready to tackle fondant. I get a lot of questions about storing fondant decorations and fondant toppers, so let me give you a couple tips. First, you don't want these things to dry out completely. When you're working with smaller fondant decorations that need to go onto a cake, you typically want to let them dry out enough so that it makes it easier for you to handle them. Any more than about 15 or 20 minutes. And once they're dry just a little bit, it makes it easier for them to be picked up and placed onto the cake. You have to be really careful with fondant toppers. You want to make those in advance, but no more than about three days in advance. Additionally, you don't want to leave your fondant toppers exposed to air because what will happen is if it dries out completely, it will start to crack, it will become brittle, and parts and pieces of it may crumble. So it's super important that you make sure that the fondant topper is covered very loosely in plastic wrap. Do you want some more creative ideas on how you can use fondant? Check out this video here. If you enjoyed this one, be sure to hit the like button below. And as always, thanks for watching.